How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at our next layer two topic, which is gonna be trunking. Awesome stuff. So we're gonna pick up where we left off in the previous video and talk about some of the details when it comes to that because it's really important that you understand that trunking is pretty important, right? We definitely need to make sure that we can trunk between our VLANs, or trunk, I'm sorry, trunk between our switches and things like that. So basically what a trunk is doing is it's actually doing some tagging. So for those of you that are familiar with the, not familiar with the concept, if I have a switch here and I have a switch here, let's say I have a PC1 here and I have PC2 here and there's a trunk link sitting between them. This is in VLAN 12 and this is in VLAN 12. What ends up happening is if I want to communicate this way to switch one, to go to switch two, that means that communication between switch one and switch two for traffic in VLAN 12, I need to be able to represent VLAN 12 from here to here and then from here to there. So traffic that's going from switch one to switch two needs to be tagged or identified in some manner in order to allow that other communication to happen. How that actually happens is through trunking. So think of a trunk link the same way you would a Ethernet cable, right? You're gonna have, you know, you got an outer sheathing of uh, pr protective cable, and then inside of that you got eight wires, right? So if I want to communicate, if I want to be able to go between the first floor, well, an elevator, I've heard this uh, analogy used as well. If I want to go from the first floor to the 50th floor, I have two options. I can either A, take the stairs, and I'll be not able to move the next morning because that's a lot of walking, or two, I take the elevator. The elevator is going to allow me to move from between floor one and floor 50 relatively easy. So a trunk link is going to allow you to move between switches, move, you know, with multiple VLANs. So the more, as soon as you have more than one VLAN, two or 20 or 200, you're gonna need a trunk link between the two switches. Simple as that. Any other variation of that doesn't, you, doesn't apply, right? So when we do that, we can figure this guy as a trunk link. Now what does a trunk link actually do? Well, think of it like this. You have, um, most modern switches rely on the 802.1q method of tagging. So a tag is actually inserted. So this guy right here is just gonna be a four byte header that's inserted at the layer two header or inside the layer two header. So if we take the layer two header, right? And we're going to add a four byte header to that, a four byte tag. This tag right here in the in the middle of it, we're going to define what the VLAN ID is going to be. So in this case, here 12. If I want to go between switch one and switch two, I need to put inside of that 802.1q header the VLAN ID, so that when traffic goes from switch one over to switch two, when switch two receives it, it's going to see the 802.1q header added, and it's going to go, oh, well, what particular VLAN is this identifying? Oh. It's identifying VLAN 12, perfect. I'm gonna place the traffic from switch one into switch two inside of VLAN 12, which is going to allow the communication to happen with PC2. That's basically what's gonna end up happening. Let's go ahead and take actually a look at deploying this because it's a fairly simple and straightforward concept. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this gets rolled out. Let's go ahead and pull up Wireshark again. And this time I'm not going to capture on this interface, I'm actually going to capture on gig zero slash one on switch 34. So I'm gonna come over here and capture on gig one. Open Wireshark, yep. Oh, and it bugged out on me because I had to go dive into something else. So let me go ahead and re-authenticate to that device real quick. So, all right, so go come over here to gig one, capture. Yep, beautiful. So I'm gonna pull this guy up and we can see DTP is happening between these two. And DTP basically is gonna look, and it's trying to do IS, uh, ISL, the inter-switch link, which is Cisco's 
it's uh, it's a Cisco proprietary protocol used to try to uh, do the encapsulation between the devices. And here we can see VLAN one is trying to be used, but that's not what we want to use, right? But DTP, Dynamic Tracking Protocol, will try to do ISL first. And if ISL doesn't work, then it'll go to 802.1Q. If 802.1Q doesn't work, then it'll go to an access port. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at this process. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way. If I look at switch 35, or sorry, sorry switch 36 right now, I'm going to go ahead and log in real quick. Go to global config. Host name is going to be switch 36. And then I'm also going to go in here and I'm going to create VLAN 100. Name it VLAN 100. I'm going to exit out. And what's going to end up happening is I'm going to place gig0 slash 2 right here. I'm going to place this inside of VLAN 100. So um, interface gig0 slash 2. Switch port access, VLAN 100. Switch port mode is access. And then spanning tree port fast to speed the process up a little bit. Okay. Now if I look back over here at DTP, same thing is happening. Nothing, nothing spectacular is going on. All, all that is groovy, right? So if I go back to switch 34, I want to force the traffic to go over gig zero one. So I'm going to type in interface gig zero slash two, and I'm gonna shut, the, shut this guy down for the time being. So it's just gonna disable the connectivity between switch 34 and switch 35, okay? That's all I'm gonna do at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to, on switch 34, do show VLAN brief, and I do have VLAN 100 applied to gig zero zero. Now, if I do show interface trunk at the moment, Nothing pops up. Do show run interface gig zero slash one. Nothing spectacular going on. What I'm going to go do is I'm going to go and type in interface gig zero slash one, and I'm going to type in switch port mode of trunk. And it says you can't. You need to configure it with a trunk mode. Well, in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and type in switch port is mode is dynamic dynamic desirable right and if I do show interface gig zero slash one uh, switch port it is in so it's negotiating right and you can see that it's negotiated ISL right if I do show interface trunk we can see now that it's negotiated ISL, right? We didn't have to do anything, it just that that's just what happened. Now, if we look at this, and we look at some of what's going on, we see a, a bunch of detail going back and forth, and we're looking for, Spanish protocol is having a conniption fit right now, and we can see the DTP has, it's going back and forth, and it ISL negotiated, right? That's what it's detecting. No harm, no foul. Well, if I go over here to switch 36 and I do show interface trunk, guess what? On the connection on gig 00 to switch 34, I am also doing ISL, right? But what happens if I want to change this up to be something else? Let's say I want to run 802.1Q. So what I'm going to do is on the switch 34 side, on interface gig 0 slash 1, I'm going to type in switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Okay. Now what should end up happening here is we're going to have DTP going back and forth. And what will end up happening is you see right here that 802.1 Q is now being leveraged, right? And when we go to 802.1 Q, we can see it's going back and forth. And it says that the 802.1 Q was negotiated. If we go back over here and hit the up arrow. We now should see N dash 802.1 Q. Now 802.1 Q was negotiated. That's what that N dash means. It means it was negotiated. So we're communicating back and forth. Everybody's happy with the end result. If you come back over here to do show interface gig zero slash zero switch port, you can see that right here. That the administrative trunking encapsulation is set to negotiate, but the operational trunking encapsulation is, is dot one Q, right? Everybody's happy. 
Now, do I recommend that you keep your communication that set it that way? I really don't actually. I don't think auto negotiation of anything is a good idea. As a matter of fact, I'm going to disable DTP because we've already seen DTP operate. We've seen it negotiate back and forth. So again, that's why I have Wireshark running because some of the stuff doesn't show up layer three, it's in layer two operation. What I'm gonna go do now is on switch 34, I'm gonna type in switch port, uh, switch port mode of trunk, right? That's gonna go back and forth. And then let's go ahead and scoot this down here a little bit. We see Spanish protocol is doing its thing. We see DTP is doing its thing. If we do show interface gig zero slash one switch port, we're gonna see now that DTP, it's still turned on, right? But now we can see the administrative mode, I'm sorry, the, um, the, the mode is trunk and so is the encapsulation is dot one Q. If we go back over here and hit the, the up arrow, right, we're still negotiated and we can still see that we are doing dynamic, or sorry, uh, we are doing negotiation of trunking is on. So what I'm gonna type here as on switch 34, I'm gonna type in switch port, no negotiate. That's going to disable that capability. So if I hit the up arrow a couple times, look at this, we can see that negotiation of trunking is turned off, which is what we wanna have. And I'm going to go to switch 36. And we, but see it's here, it's turned on. So it's both sides have to be configured the same. So we're typing switch port, no negotiate. Go back here, verify the config, uh, negotiation, um, I might have to go to uh, interface gig zero star zero. Okay, so I need to say switch port. Um, can I do host? Switch port host. So it's, it's um, I, that's actually not the what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna type in switch port trunk and cap dot one Q, switch port mode of trunk. And if we switch port, no negotiate. If I go back over here to here, we can see that trunk encapsulation, negotiation of trunking is turned off, which is what we want. And everybody's happy. Now what I need to go do is on iOS 16, and I need to come back over here and I'm going to ping 10.100.1.23. Now the question is, should XR23 respond? And the answer to the question is it should, because now I have a trunk link set up between the switches. So if I go back to XRV23, and I look at my configuration, it should be working the way that it's supposed to. Now if I go back over here to switch 34 and do show interface trunk, we can see that trunking is turned on. If we go over to switch 36 and figure out why this is not working, uh, do show interface trunk. Okay, that's working. And if I go to that's set up, do show VLAN brief. And VLAN 100 is applied to gig zero slash two. Let's double check it on switch 34. Do show VLAN brief. Okay, so it's applied. Do show Mac address dynamic VLAN 100. Nothing's being learned at the moment. But if we do show spanning tree for VLAN 100, it now it's in forwarding. It might have just been trying to converge. So if we try to hit that up, up again, it might take it a couple seconds for it to do its thing. And it's not cooperating. Wunderbar. Okay, so not that big of a deal, but we do definitely do wanna figure out why that's not working. Do show interface trunk. So it is configured as a trunk. Do show Mac address dynamic VLAN 100. Let's take a look at 23 and Cisco, Cisco show IP interface brief, ping 
let me take a look at some of the interfaces here on Switch 34. So do show interface status. Okay, gig zero slash one. Oh, gig zero zero is not connected. So do show IP interface brief. Let's go to interface gig zero slash zero. Do show run interface gig zero slash zero. And we're gonna shut the port. And then no shut the port, bring that back up. Okay, line protocols there, do show IP interface brief. Do show interface status. Okay, that's better. We're gonna go back to 16, hit the up arrow, and then after a couple seconds, the ping should go. That's just being weird now. You know what, actually it's probably spanning tree protocol. So do show spanning tree for VLAN 100. Now well, it's set to go straight into forwarding mode. Do show interface status. Do show VLAN brief. Do show IP interface brief. Okay, the interface is up. I'm not sure why it's not passing traffic. Very, very unusual. Do show interface trunk. Okay, it should be passing. Do show MAC address dynamic VLAN 100. Okay, it's learning that, that it is passing traffic. So let's try this one more time. There it goes. It just was kind of stuck in a funky moment. So, but that's okay though, we're good to go now. So it's passing traffic, which is what we wanted to do. So if I wanted to pass traffic between switch 36 and switch 35, I would have to do the same thing. Let's come back over here to interface gig zero slash one, switch port trunk and cap dot one Q, switch port mode of trunk. And then I'm gonna type in switch port no negotiate. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on switch 35. Host name is gonna be switch 35 and then um, VLAN 100 I'm gonna go ahead and name VLAN 100 and then on interface gig zero slash one it's gonna be switch port trunk and cap dot one Q switch port mode of trunk and then after a moment or so switch port uh, show Mac address table dynamic VLAN 100 we're gonna go to here I'm gonna hit the up arrow and I'm gonna type in 17. And after a couple seconds, we should have communication to 17. 35 might be a little slow though. So I'm learning information in, oh, uh, show run interface gig zero slash zero. So interface gig zero slash zero, switch port access VLAN 100, switch port mode of access, spanning tree port fast, okay. So we did see some ICMP unreachables coming in. Not that big of a deal. Show spanning tree VLAN 100. And it is momentarily will be coming on. I have to wait for gig zero zero to move into forwarding mode. Show run interface gig zero slash zero. So now it's there, go back to 16, hit the up arrow. There it goes, the ICMPs are working as expected. So we have it trunking the way that we need it to. And so that's really what it comes down to. Beyond that, I've never seen an environment run ISL. I've always seen environments run 802.1Q. It's the de facto standard, everybody does that, so I recommend you do as well. Beyond that, that's trunking. There's really not a whole lot to it. You turn it on, let it negotiate, pass the information back and forth, and you're in good shape. So that's basically where that comes into play. So we'll take a look at VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol, in the next video and how that comes into play and continue moving forward in our Layer 2 section. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out. I'll catch you guys in the next video.